from just off Orwell Lane. A shadow needs light to spread out across the background it covers, and when the sun is blacked out by a fog delivered with a scientist's altruistic device, the city is in peril. Will the fog rise when the shadow looks into its source, or will the foul vapor be tinged with poison and end all within the city? An exciting, fast-paced adventure that surely kept listeners on the edge of their seat just as much on October 16, 1938, when it originally aired, as it does today. Enjoy Night Without End. of men. The shadow knows. <laughs> Once again, your neighborhood blue coal dealer brings you the thrilling adventures of the shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcefully to old and young alike that crime does not fail. <laughs> There is enough anthracite for all the lucky householders whose homes are heated with hard coal. These homes are enjoying healthful warmth in every room. Even though winter winds blow, there is no need to cut down heat or close off rooms in homes heated with dependable hard coal. Yes, sir. When you have a supply of hard coal in your basement, you're the boss of heating your house. You are absolutely independent of any outside service. Be glad you heat with anthracite. The home heating fuel that never fails. And remember, blue coal is the finest anthracite money can buy. The shadow, who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's story, Night Without End. Darkness, brethren. Nothing but night. Night without end. For three days, there's been no sun, no light, nothing but this terrible darkness. Because the world is evil, wicked, sinful. Let us pray, brethren. This is the end. The end of the world. <laughs> Explanation. Atmospheric conditions are not the cause of this black fog. Yes, we know it's been three days of total blackness. No, no other city or section is affected. Boston, Philadelphia, and all other sections are normal. I'm sorry. Since we do not know the cause, we cannot predict the end. I can't see. I've got to have more light on this operating table, or this child will die. Slow down, Bill. You can't see 
can sing in this platform. If we hit anything, it takes along in the last four hours. But we can find three of the fires. Slow down. Look out for that building. <laughs> Where the devil have you been? I sent you to... What? You're at Commissioner Weston's office. Wait a minute. Be right. Come in here at the press door. Stop the presses. Hold everything. This is rewrite, Bert. Let's have it. After 72 hours of panic and terror, looting and disaster, fires and accidents, a definite clue has been unearthed by the police. A clue explaining the black fog enveloping the city. At noon yesterday, an extortion note demanding $5 million as the prize of dispelling the black fog was received by the mayor. A sensational new smokescreen device invented by the famed scientist Dr. Heath and designed to protect entire cities from air raids has been stolen. And Dr. Heath has disappeared. There now seems to be no doubt that the three days of darkness Terror and death is man made. An emergency meeting is in touch with the office of police commissioner Weston. We've got to have more protection, Commissioner Weston. We've got to have it. Our warehouses have been systematically looted. Hundreds have been killed in fires and accidents. Fifty dead in that subway crash alone. Gentlemen, the police are doing everything in their power to preserve order, to stop looting and rioting. Why doesn't the governor call out the National Guard? We've got to have martial law. That's what it is. Gentlemen, gentlemen, wait. Listen to me. In the last five hours, we have learned this black fog is man-made. Then why don't you do something? Find them. Stop this horrible nightmare. Wait. We have definite proof that some man or group of men has stolen a smokescreen device invented by Dr. Heat. Where is this Dr. Heat? We don't know. But we do know these fiends want five million dollars as the price of our ever seeing the light of day again. Well, then let's raise the money. Let's pay it. It's costing business millions every hour this darkness continues. How many more people have to die before we stop this? Well, why don't you find these men? We're doing everything. Everything in our power. Mr. Weston. What is it, Sergeant? Commissioner, Dr. Heath is outside. Dr. Heath? Heath. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, gentlemen. You'll have to excuse me. Uh, wait here, and I may have news for you in a few minutes. He's in your private office alone. Close the door, Sergeant. See that we're not disturbed. Yes, Commissioner. Commissioner Weston? Yes. You are Dr. Heath? Yes, I am. Where have you been, man? Where is this fog machine of yours? I wish I could tell you. You mean you won't? I mean I can't. I don't know. What? Perhaps you'd better let me explain what has happened and what is going to happen. If the men who have my fog machines do not get their five million dollars that they're asking. Who are these men? Where are I they? I don't know. I've been their prisoner, gagged and blindfolded, since the day that they raided my laboratories. If that's true, how did you escape? I did not escape. They released me. Sent me here with a message. A warning. Yes? And why did they send you, Dr. Heath? Because they thought that I could convince you that if the five million dollars is not paid, a horrible fate awaits this entire city. A calamity far greater than we're going through now. What could be worse than this night without end? Listen, Weston. My fog device is so constructed and so equipped that it can be quickly converted from a purely defensive weapon against air attacks to an offensive weapon. What do you mean, Dr. Heath? So let me explain carefully. Yes, yes, go let on. let me warn you, Commissioner Weston. Yes? If one word of what I'm going to tell you gets in the newspapers, there'll be a panic, the like of which no city in the world has ever known. A panic? Even now we have a panic on our hands with this cursed black fog of yours. What could possibly be worse? Just this. Pumping into the black fog a deadly new gas. Gas? A deadly gas mixed in that fog? Oh, yes, a deadly gas which... May heaven forgive me, I also perfected. And if the five million dollars is not paid within the next six hours... Six hours? Yes. If it's not paid, these men who have my fog machines and the gas will blanket this city with a creeping death that will not spare a living soul. Special radio bulletin. Shortly afternoon today, Commissioner Weston left an emergency conference with leaders of the city. And for four hours, he's remained in his private office with a mysterious visitor. This visitor, according to rumor, is Dr. Heath, inventor of the Black Fog smokescreen, which has plunged this city into more than 72 hours of darkness, panic, and a death list running into thousands and mounting hourly. The entire city awaits the result of their momentous conference. Turn off the radio. We'll be on the air again the moment they're... Then what do you suppose Commissioner Weston has really found, Dr. Heath? Most likely, Dr. Heath has been released by his abductors, Margot. Sent to Weston with an ultimatum. Then you really believe that fantastic note asking $5 million is authentic, Lamont? Yes, I do, Margot. And this is what I've been waiting for. What are you going to do, Lamont? I believe the time has come, Margot. 
when our friend Commissioner Weston will welcome the help of the shadow. Dr. Heath? Yes, Commissioner Weston? I have completed the arrangements for the payment of the five million dollars in the manner prescribed by these men who are in possession of your fog machines. I believe your story. I'm forced to believe it. But how do we know they'll keep their word? How do we know they won't keep on blanketing this city in darkness? Perhaps even using that deadly gas? There is no assurance, Commissioner Weston. But I must beg of you, don't try to have me followed when I take your message to them. They've warned me against that. And if it happens, they'll start releasing the deadly gas. It'll take only a few hours to wipe out the city. I understand. You won't be followed. Thank you. For myself, I don't care. I'm to blame for this catastrophe. Who can be expected to anticipate such a foul scheme? But tell me, Dr. Heath, why are they so sure you will obey their instructions? They are quite sure. You see, they're holding my young son, James, as hostage. If I disobey their orders, I'll never see him again. Hello? <laughs> Commissioner Weston. A shadow. What do you want? Dr. Heath is in your office. He is about to return to the criminals who stole his invention and are now demanding a king's ransom. How do you know so much? Are you mixed up in this? No, but I believe I can help you if you will cooperate. What could you do? Think, Commissioner. The Shadow is the one person who might be able to accompany Dr. Heath to his rendezvous. Unknown. Unseen. In the shadows. That's ridiculous. This is a matter for the police. We can't have you... Uh... I'm waiting, Commissioner. Well, speaking unofficially, it might work. All right, Shadow. Much as I hate to admit it, we're stumped. Desperate. Dr. Heath is here. He's leaving right away. They're holding his son to guarantee his return with the five million. If it isn't paid, they threaten to wipe out the entire city with another invention of Heath's. A poison gas. Poison gas? Yes. But remember, Shadow, if one word of this gets out, there'll be a worse panic. Thousands have been killed already, but it's nothing to what will happen. I understand. What type of car is Heath driving? What is the license number? A blue four-door sedan. License number 9F2727. But how are you going to... You will hear from me. Warn Dr. Heath. Tell him who and what I am. Tell him to expect me. Let him start in exactly ten minutes. Then wait, Commissioner. Wait until you hear from me again. Can you see to follow him, Margot? Yes, but I wouldn't dare go any faster. Now listen, Margot. I want you to drive in front of him. Force him to the curb just long enough for me to leave this car as Lamont Cranston and step into his car as the shadow. Then what, Lamont? What am I to do? Just wait? Yes. Don't follow him no matter what happens. Drive to the midtown section and Margot. Keep the car radio tuned in on the shortwave band the shadow always uses. Well, all right, Lamont, but I wish I could go along. Now, remember, they also serve who only stand and wait, Margot. Now, now, Margot, cut in ahead of him, force him to the curb. Apologize as if it were an accident, then drive on. I hate to give an imitation of a rotten driver, but here goes. Oh, I, I beg your pardon, I didn't see you. I'm sorry. I, uh, I wanted to turn. That's quite all right, miss. I... Who's that? Drive on, Dr. Heath. The shadow. Yes, doctor. I see Commissioner Weston warned you to expect me. Yes, but I told him it might prove fatal to millions of persons that this trick was discovered. You're afraid you'll be seen with me? Well, I... I can't see you. I hear your voice. It sounds close, isn't it? I am here, in the back seat. Behind you, doctor. Weston told me that you seem to fade into darkness. But it's amazing. Dr. Heath. Where have you been instructed to turn over the five million dollars? They told me to drive up First Avenue until I was stopped. I thought for a moment that car was a girl driving. I can just make out a big black sedan following us now. But that, that may be the car. If it is, do as they say. Act as if you were alone. Give no sign by word or action that I am with you. Where's the money? In this big suitcase beside me, but... but... Yes, Dr. Heath? Oh, I know you do all you can. I know that the lives of the millions of people in this city are far more important than any personal consideration. What if it's humanly possible? Will, will you try to save my son, James? I don't care what happens to me. It doesn't matter. I'm to blame for all this, but he is innocent. He's only a boy with his whole life. I will do what I can, Doctor, but I make no promises. 
It may be your life, his life, and the life of the shadow against millions of helpless and defenseless lives in this darkened and panic-stricken city. Yes, I know. I know. They're driving alongside you. Do as you're told, Dr. Heath. All I over there, Heath. All right, Heath. Bring that suitcase and get out of your car. All right. All right. Heath, get in my car. Yes. I've taken you to the chief. And just to make sure the cops didn't plant somebody in the back of your car, the tailors... What's that you have in your hand? What are you going to do? A hand grenade, Dr. Heath. Watch it rip your car to pieces. And anybody in it... Gangplank. Why have you brought me here? You'll find out. Keep going. Why haven't you put a blindfold on me this time? Zarnoff doesn't care how much you see, Dr. Heath. Now that you've brought the money. All right, through that door there. Down that ladder. Snap it up. Where's my son? You'll find out. Soon enough. All right, now. Stop where you are. Here he is, Zarov. Mm. Leave us alone. Nobody followed us here. I first blew up Heath's car and then I drove all over town, just to make sure. I'll be below if you need me. I shall not need you. You've done your part very well. So, Dr. Heath, you have returned with the money. Five million dollars. Good. Very good. You knew I would. Where's my son? Why have I been brought to a boat? You didn't have me locked up near the river before? Ah, that. You have been so curious about what happened to your wonderful fog machine that I thought it would be kind to bring you here where you might have one last look at it. I don't care anything about the cursed fog machine. Where's my son, James? Where have you been keeping him since he was taken from my home? Why haven't you let me see him? That you killed him? He is not dead. He is here also. Come, doctor. Your son and your so valuable invention are together. Down here, in the hold of this old tramp steamer. If any harm has come to him, I promised he would be safe when you returned. Look, there he is. James! James! Dad, are you all right? Yes, yes, my son. Have they, have they treated you well? I'm all right. They haven't given me much to eat, but I don't care. I was afraid they'd done something awful to you. Zaroff wouldn't tell me what had happened to you. I was afraid they'd kill you. Very touching, Dr. Heath. You and your son have served me well. But now you are of no further use to me. You mean you're going to release us? Yes, Dr. Heath. The greatest release one man can give to another in this world of life. The boon of merciful death. Wait, sir. Wait. My son has done nothing. He is young, but he would remember. No, Dr. Heath, you have both served your purpose, and now that I have the five million dollars in my hands, I want to enjoy the fruits of my victory without the fear of a living person revealing the secret of my... You'll wife. never get away to squander that money. They'll get you. Do you think I am so much a fool not to anticipate that, Doctor? When I leave this boat and this city, I shall wear one of your protective gas masks, and I shall walk without fear... To a city of the dead. You... You're going to release the gas? Even though the money's been paid? How else can I be sure of escape? Well, you... You must be mad. Insane. No. Merely strong, because I do not let pity make a weakling and a coward of me. And this is only the beginning. When I am finished here, Doctor, I shall move on. With your black fog and gas, I can exact tribute from other cities. All cities. The world shall be at my mercy. But you and your son must be the first to die. You're a fiend, sir. A fiend. I shall go into that steel cabinet there which houses your wonderful machines. Now don't move. Don't waste your last moments in futile efforts. Make your peace. Dad, 
dead. Steady, son. Steady. Don't give up hope. I'm not afraid. It is too bad, but... <laughs> Look behind you, Zaro. What? Who? Look, Zaro. In the shadows. What do you see? Nothing. No one. But that voice. I am more than a voice, Zaro. I am here. Close to you. Watching you. <laughs> no. Don't shoot, Zaro. Don't waste your bullets. Listen to me. What is this trick? That... Listen, Zaro. In your career of crime, surely you have heard of the shadow. The shadow? You. Here on this boat? Yes, Zaro. You have called upon the darkness and the shadows to further your monstrous schemes. But there was one shadow you overlooked. And I am here to put an end to your scheme. I know you, Shadow. I've heard all about you. Your flesh and blood. I can't see you. But if you come near me, touch me, I'll shoot and I won't miss. Shadow, I thought the hand grenade killed you. I don't let him get into that few tender. The gas and fun machines are in there. Get your son out of here, Doctor. I'll deal with Zorro. Yeah, the Shadow. How did he get here? Jack James, do his assessors. No time to explain. You won't get away. Any of you. Stop him, Shadow. Stop him. Don't let him get in that ship. Get back, Doctor Heath. Get off the ship. He's going to feed the poison gas into the fight machine. He's killed thousands. Stop him. Yes, try to stop me, Shadow. Try. <laughs> You failed, Shadow. Failed. Now see if you can get at me through the steel walls of this cabinet before the poison gas gets you. Shadow. Shadow. Where are you? He's turning on the gas. Get off the ship. Hurry. What are you going to do? Cut the ship. Open the sea valve. But there's no time. The ship will be full of deadly gas in a few minutes. In a half hour, the whole city Is will be... Is there any other way into that steel cabinet? No. But he'll never get out. I've bolted the door on the outside. What about the power that runs those compressors? We can't stop them. They're run by diesel engines inside the cabinet. Gas is getting thicker. Wait. Wait. Got a hit. What are those tanks behind the cabinet? Compressed gas. The deadly gas. Would they explode if they were heated? Yes. Yes, it wouldn't take much. They'd tear this ship to pieces. How much fire? Well, just a little under one of them. But it would be dangerous. It might take a minute. It might take five. We must risk it. It's our lives against thousands. Quick, find something that will burn. Anything. Dad, there's a bunch of oil so rags back here. Bring them here, Jimmy. Hurry. Hurry. That's it. Put them under the bottom tank. Quick, Jimmy. Here's a match. Now run. Run. Get off the ship. Take up Zorro's gun, Jimmy. He dropped it as I struggled with it. Give it to your father. Here's the gun, Dad. There. The ladder leads to the deck. Zorro's men try to shoot you. Shoot them. Shoot without hesitation, Dr. Heath. <laughs> Listen carefully. Phone Commissioner Weston that I have located Park and Gas Machine aboard freighter at Harlan Docks. Warn him to send police and all available firefighting apparatus. Equip all men with gas masks. Keep away, Margot. There is going to be an explosion. Keep away. That is all. There's nobody on deck, Dad. The men who brought me here went below, Jimmy. They're all down in the hold of the ship. Hurry, hurry, Jimmy. The war is too late. Those tanks will blow this ship out of the water. They'll kill everybody. Here's the gun plant to the wharf, Dad. Yes, yes, Shadow. Shadow, it takes only a few degrees rise in temperature to explode those compressed gas tanks. I'll shut them off in this instant. But you reach the wharf. We may survive. Dad, Dad, I can't breathe. Jimmy, Jimmy, here. Come on. Come on. Steady, Jimmy. Steady, we're almost on the wharf. As far away as you can. All right, Dr. Heath. Shadow, why don't those tanks explode? If the fire went out, Sarah would gas the whole city to death. It's getting. Give it. Give it your arm. I'm going back to start another fire. Wait. The gas will be killed. Wait. Did I get in the car? Where's Dr. Heath and his son? I, I, I don't remember anything after the explosion. You were unconscious when I found you on the wharf. So was Dr. Heath and the boy. Oh, Mark, you, you didn't leave them there. No, I saw them being taken to a hospital. What happened, Lamont? Uh, Zaroff, the leader of the extortionists, got away from us. Dr. Heath locked him in with the fog and gas machines. We had to set fire to the gas compression tanks and blow up the ship, keep him from killing everyone in the city. And nearly killed yourselves doing it. Yes, but... Margot, look. 
the black fog is thinning. Oh, there's the sun, Lamont. The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> 